Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to the Fantasy Forecast for Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016. I apologize. I had an upload for yesterday, um, and I didn't have a transfer cable from my camera to get it out to you guys. I'm hoping that this show gets out to you. I have one on order, and I'm filming it now and waiting for it to get here. So, well, it should be here soon, and I hopefully will get it up before the lock today. Um... What you're looking at is the optimal lineup for Roto Grinders today. It's projected at 314, and I'm going to go through them each position. Point guard, we have Westbrook and McCollum, and they are projecting Westbrook at 51.5, and, and they're projecting McCollum at 25.3. Uh, if you look at that on a dollars per point basis, Ray McCollum is coming at almost seven times value on that projection, which is very nice. Um, you have Holiday and Harden at the shot guard. Uh, they're projecting Harden at 53 and Holiday at 41. And now, I'm thinking Holiday could have a much bigger game today, honestly. With the loss of Davis and the loss of Anderson, they have nobody now that really is the one that like will be the point person to do the shot work. And that's going to be Holiday now. So Holiday is going to be putting up shots like Matt. And you can obviously target other value players there before they readjust in price, just like Memphis did. Um, all right, so continuing on, and this is the Roto Grinders lineup. I'm just explaining their picks. It's a short slate today, so it might make it easier for you guys. Um, at small forward, we have Bogdanovic and Babbitt. Bogdanovic, um, it's 5200. The price has been going up, but as you can see, he's just pretty much a center of like you know the offense now. I do think they had one of their guys coming back today, but I don't think it's really going to cut into Bojan's minutes very much. I mean, he's just been too strong with what they've been doing lately. It might cut into some of the other net players, though, so I would watch that a little bit. And then Babbitt is the next guy up for New Orleans, basically, as soon as Davis goes. I mean, let's look at his stats there real fast, guys. Pull him up. How many minutes did he get? 29 minutes now with Davis out, so, and you compare that to the other times he had a decent minute run. The only two comparisons in the recent past are Golden State and Milwaukee. Um, Miami plays much slower than both of those teams, so you'd have to consider that. Um, you know, I like the Rabbit today to hit his five times value or maybe six times. Another performance like last night. I don't think you're looking at a 30-pointer, though. My opinion. <coughs> All right, we got Zebo and we got Cunningham. All right, on a short slate, guys, and I know you guys are all going to play. This is where I'm going to tell you all, play light, play light, play light. Because on a very short slate, if you don't have the correct choices in the position, like if you just fade just one or two of the wrong guys, it, you're, you're killed. Your whole lineup's dead because usually the lineups that win need those guys. There's just not enough variation around. So on a night like tonight, if you make a mistake... Well, it's magnified. You can make mistakes on bigger slates, and you can still cash because, you know, as long as the mistake isn't that good, you can make a bad, smart play, you know. Maybe the game was projected to go even, but it turned out to be a blowout, you know. It was a smart DFS move, but it, the luck just didn't turn your way. Well, on a big slate, a lot of those options, you know, normally you've picked enough good guys to bring your score and elevate it up. You have enough choices with the floors. On a small slate, you don't. So, and Zebo tonight, guys, I'm pretty sure he's going to be one of those choices that you're going to need. Now, power forward. I had someone at Twitter tell me they were watching the game yesterday and say, you know, that, you know, he'd hurt his leg and, you know, uh, well, he his leg was always hurting and, you know, they don't have anyone left to turn to. He did, like, 40 minutes or something insane. He did a little bit less last night, like 35, and that's about his run. But what you guys have to remember here is, and this is where like it's so important to get analysis from a bunch of different sources and try to figure out you know where you're going and what you're doing with things. But Zebo tonight is playing the Lakers, and really, do you want anyone else against him? I mean, he's got the best goddamn matchup possible when you think about it. I mean, really. You you start thinking about opponents' ranks in, you know, fantasy scoring and things like that. And that'll tell you whether someone's going to do well. But, I mean, the Lakers have one of the worst interior defenses there is. 
and I think they're like second or third, or maybe fourth against the position. I mean, it's in terms of opposing fantasy points scored, it's just unreal. Uh, so, anyways, moving on. Um, Cunningham, again, next guy up with Davis out and with Anderson out. Let's see what his minute run was. 40 minutes, wow. And decent run the rest of the way through, so he's going to basically be a solid point of their offense. Now, your big problem, of course, are those floors. But you see a lot of those. Um, Golden State was only a 21-minute run. Charlotte was a 32-minute run. That's not good. Utah's a 30-minute run. Tough team. San Antonio's a 32-minute tough team. So, again, softer teams, though. And Miami is a little bit of a softer team, though. I mean, they run slow. and eh. I don't know if I like Cunningham as much either today, but I mean, he's probably with because they just have to have someone out there no matter what, whether they're getting blown or not. I mean, he's going to get you some stats. So it's not a bad choice. I mean, they're trying to give you an optimal cash lineup. And at the bottom, you have Whiteside. Now, Whiteside's going to go up against those soft Pelicans now. And even though he's been a bench player, I mean, he's the guy with the biggest run I've ever seen off the bench. It's unreal. And, um, 36 points, fantasy. If the fantasy points he gives you off the bench are crazy. The number has dropped a little bit lately, but I'd expect it would probably pop up in the chin. Maybe look for 28 minutes for him. Probably depends on how the game's going. All right, and that was Roto Grinders. Roto, moving on, let's do Roto Wire. Okay, and Roto Wire has for us today at point guard, Westbrook and McCollum. You'll notice that optimal lineups start to do this on short slate, guys. It just happens. Um, they're projecting Westbrook at 52.7. They're projecting McCollum at 19.9, 20. Um, they're projecting Holiday at 35, and Jeremy Lin as your other shot guard, and he's being projected at 20.5. Uh, and you have at small forward Durant and Beasley. Durant's being projected at 48. Beasley's being projected at 34. That's a really, really high, good value. Wow. Might want to try to find a way to get Beasley in if that's correct on their projections there. I, I don't really see Rotowire come up with seven times value very much. I'll bet you he's at the top of their slate on value. Let's check that minute run and see why. Ah, he's been a beast lately. Look at that. 30 points. Yeah, he'll get run again tonight. They're going to need it against Oklahoma. Okay, so this might be a look where, you know, will he play off a of Harden too and, you know, maybe pair the two together? Harden and Beasley, Harden and Beasley, Harden and Beasley. Uh, you just, well, when you look at the bad, the worst ones, you know, he's done less minute runs. So if he does a good minute run and with that kind of performance last night, he's definitely going to have earned it. So. Yeah, Beasley looks like a good play today for me. I would like him. I do think that projection is pretty darn good. They have Randolph. Zebo is being projected at 33. And they have Zeller at the power forward. I have Zeller personally in my own cash lineup, but I'll, so I'll explain him later. But I like his spot tonight against the Nets. And we have Dwight Howard at center. Center is a real interesting position tonight, guys. Um, you don't have a true, true stud, I would say, you know, like a Cousins or anyone like that, or a Towns or someone that you would just be like, yeah, I could just nab them for sure, but with a soft matchup. So, I mean, Howard's got the softer matchup. Um, we just don't know if Harden's going to play or not. That's the, really the big question. If Harden doesn't play, it's going to change the entire game. Howard's going to be dependent on a lot more. Beasley's going to... I mean, Beasley becomes a lock if, if he's out because they're still going to need someone to score something for them and the way he ran last night I'm surprised that they won't let them jack the ball up another 15 or 20 times tonight <sighs> okay short slates what can we say right all right and they are projecting this total again um they had a Howard at 35 the total is 299 moving on fantasy pros and fantasy pros is really funny guys although I don't mind the lineup but their projection is off because, well, I'll tell you they're projecting this at 321 points, but they have the center down there as Omar Asik, and I do like Asik tonight. He's in my cash lineup as well. I think that when you can't find a stud at center on cash games and trying to get a cash payout and just trying to do hit as high a score as you can, you really want to like go cheaper at the position. When there isn't a stud to pay for, that's the place to hit value. 
It just makes sense to me. So, um, they're projecting him at 60, though. <laughs> Uh, I have to, ASIC is not getting 60 points tonight, so I don't know where the hell they've, and so that has to be factored into their 321. Let's say he gets 30, and which means this is actually projected at 291. So moving on. Uh, we have Westbrook and Walker at the point guard. Uh, we have Kobe Bryant and Lynn at the shot guard. Kobe Bryant is playing today, guys, which is why I included this lineup. There will be some people that try to jump on him last minute thinking, you know, I'll try to nab it, but... I don't know. There's a question mark about the game. I mean, Memphis isn't that good either now that it's the JV squad, like I've been saying. But they still have a playoff spot that they're kind of, like, digging and fighting for. I don't know. Kobe's in an interesting spot there. I don't know if he's going to really want to play hard against them. Who does he have, they have that he wants to, like, you know... It's a question mark on him all the time. To me, it's just an avoid, but if he puts up his 40, then you're going to see him in every winning lineup. So that's why it's here. All right, shot guards were Bryant and Lynn. Small forwards, Durant and Beasley. Power forward, Jamichael Green and Ibaka. And center, Asik. And like I said, it's not a bad lineup. We use a lot of money on the table, 900. Sometimes on short slates, that is a winning combination. You never know. And this is Daily Fantasy Cafe, guys. Daily Fantasy Cafe is projecting this at 287. They have Westbrook and Sloan at the point guard, Holiday and Sha um, Clarkson at the shot guard. I'd be watching the Clarkson pick now, obviously, with Kobe in. There's 200 left. I mean, I would probably just swap Clarkson out for Kobe and take a run. It's probably not a bad thing. Um, you have Winslow and Barnes at the small forward. You have Randall and Randolph, Zebo at power forward. I love Zebo against the Lakers, but Randall, I really would not be looking at with Kobe. It just Kobe takes too much of the, the shots and the production. He gets too much usage on the court and strips it from everyone else at their values. And then you have Whiteside at the center. They just kind of spent up at the position. Granted, like I said, center kind of sucks, but four game slate. This is Roto QL, guys. And this is Roto QL with James Harden. And I had to run a second one just to make sure because you'll want to pivot off that at the last minute, guys. And I'm going to show you my own cash lineup and the pivot that you'll do depending on if he plays or not. So they have Drogic and Douglas in the point guard. They have Harden and Richardson at the shot guard. They have Durant and Bogdanovic at the small forward. Young and Bass at power forward. And Cantor for center. And they are projecting this at 317. And when you take out Harden their pivot becomes this. And it still projects relatively high. Projects at 316 and a half, which is Westbrook and Tony Douglas again, Richardson and Courtney Lee now. And Courtney Lee, I think, is in a really pretty spot. You have Durant and Bogdanovic at small forward. You have Thad Young and Zebo at power forward. Zebo's like universal. He's probably going to be the highest owned player today. Um, my buddy's right off Twitter and his, he gets limited minutes for some reason. Ooh. But I doubt it. Memphis just has no one left. They have to run people. And um, Cantor for the center. Okay. And then my optimal cash lineup, if I was going to run cash today. Honestly, guys, I pre practice what I preach. Preach today is a play light day. And because of that, I would normally play a tournament anyways on today, like today when you analyze the contest on a four-game slate. There might be enough lottery tickets at the bottom where the cashing line could be lower on the cheap GPP, the one and two dollars, versus a cash games today. Um, it's starting to vary back and forth though, and last night on a nine game slate with 290, we might have seen an effect from the loss of all of the New York players. Um, no one's really talking about that, but FanDuel and DraftKings basically have no more business in New York, and FanDuel is headquartered in New York, which makes it all the more ironic, but they can only offer free contests there. That's why there's lots of free contests available today. They're trying to get them people just to keep playing, but they've lost the market. And there were a lot of pros centered in New York, because that's where FanDuel started from. It's almost like the heart of DFS and where it grew out and branched from. The more than 3 million player accounts centered out there, and I would say it's about 25% of the active DFS market. So when you, that's an appreciable effect. Uh, seeing cashing lines at 290 last night on GPPs were was kind of shocking on a nine-game slate. It would normally be a touch above 300 now. So 
and we could see that effect again. Um, with that in mind, this would be my recommended cash entry to try to get your money. Now you have Westbrook and Frazier at the point guard. And I'm pivoting off McCollum only because it's a minute thing for me, and it's also a value thing for me. New Orleans is kind of the next man up thing, like I was saying, with their, both of their injuries. And so at point guard, yeah, you have Holiday, of course, but Frazier has given you an amazing minute run the last two games. And now notice, this can just disappear at a heartbeat. It could. But 27 minutes, 33 fantasy points. 27 minutes next night, eh, it was only 18, you know, but it was kind of the floor performance that you'd expect. That's still five times value. It'd be quite, I mean, I'd have you with that on most of these nights lately. And then again, last night with only 20 minutes, he puts up 31 fantasy points. And it's like, what? So they're probably going to give him a little more run tonight. I mean, you might be looking right around the 27 again. The computers are going to average out and say 24, but in coaching terms, I would say you're looking at 27 points, even on that slow Miami team. And 20, or 27 minutes. And, and actually, that's a point a minute to me, too. So I would say 27 points as well at this value, which makes it a good, solid cash play because the floor is there with those minutes. McCollum is your other choice, and you could pivot off this because everyone's going to have McCollum today as well. Thing is, he just signed a second Sunday contract a little bit ago, and they're going to have to make a decision as to whether to keep him or not. So if he gets his minute run, I think he's going to play like a monster. He's going to like, and he's got against the Lakers. So I think this is an excellent choice too. It's really kind of take your pick there. You know, go with Frazier, go with McCollum, whatever you would want. I mean, it's really, they're both good choices. But I would spend up for Westbrook in the other spot. You could take both and drop Westbrook today, and, but then you're starting to move into what I would call a tournament lineup and not like a, a cash lineup. Okay, so let's cancel that and look back. At the shot guard, we have Holiday and Harden, and that pivots, you know, Harden needs to play. If Harden plays, that's great. Holiday, someone is going to be the center of the New Orleans offense now. Davis and Anderson gone. And I think it's Holiday, and I think he's primed for a good 45 tonight. It just looks wonderful. Harden, in that nice, higher-scoring game, because Houston, okay, see, neither one really has much D, to be quite honest. Harden just doesn't. He gets his production in other ways and normally gives up a couple points on turnovers each night. But anyways, I like Harden for his 50, 55 and bait him against the Nets. Uh, Mr. Production right there is 4 or 40 is totally safe for cash, and, you know, he could give you 45 tonight. It's just not looking like a night he gives you 30 at all. So, Winslow, um, well-positioned against the Pelicans, and you need to punt in a couple places in order to pick up a little bit, but you don't want your punts to be losing minutes or anything like that. Now, New Orleans is going to try to play Miami faster, and this is the only guy that's got a little bit of the guy that can keep up with it, and so if he gets his better performances, and you can see where he's done that, 27 against the Nuggets, 22 against the Suns, 27 against the Bulls. You can't really count the 27 against Toronto because they're a little bit of a better team, but you know, it was a 43-minute run. It was overtime. So anyways, Winslow definitely will get the minute run tonight and should definitely hit his floor of you know 17 to 18. But I'd be looking, because of the Pelicans, at more like a 23-24 pointer, and that's really good for cash. Zebo against the Lakers, it's just such a good spot against them. Cody Zeller, that is going to be a little bit of a surprise to you guys, but you're going to have to look like at the information you know, kind of carefully out there. Um, it's kind of like with Brooke Lopez not really all the way back yet, you know, it's, he's just doing well. I mean, he's a bit underpriced, and... It's been consistent. I mean, and then the, the fantasy stats. The Nets are not good against, you know, the power, or power forward or opposing centers. And, you know, they allow, like, the sixth most or something like that. And, you know, since Zeller's kind of going to play the center spot some, that's kind of where I would be aiming. You have to avoid these, like, you know, where someone's actually named in position on FanDuel and think about how the game flow will actually go, especially with the really depleted teams like New Orleans and Memphis's. They don't play in their positions, and it takes FanDuel forever to adjust people. Like, Holiday is finally in the shot guard when he was a point guard for the longest time. Anyways, and uh, at the center, we got ASIC. 
Now, ASIC, I don't believe of that 60-point, you know, projection or whatever the hell they're claiming, but that's just ridiculous at his... Like, if he plays 30 minutes, I mean, he's going to be the guy that benefits from, like, New Orleans having no big guys left. He's the biggest one there is now, so it looks like they're going to run him out there and they're going to give him the run and just look what happened the last time. It went from 13 minutes to 30. 15 points, 14 boards... And I don't expect that kind of thing again. I think that might be more of a ceiling thing. But man, the guy gives you 22 points tonight and just averages out between that and the sack and at a still of a 30-minute minute run. Wow. Talk about underpriced. So he'll be moving up again tomorrow if he does another 30 minutes. And that's what I think you can expect tonight. That's my cash. And this is how you pivot if Harden is gone. This is real simple, guys, okay? Basically, take your Winslow pick, which was the kind of the cheapest one, that really didn't much, and go with Durant. You know the points are solid, and you know it, it, it's just you're going for raw points. And then you drop Harden right to Courtney Lee. You've already heard the recommendations about him before. He's going to have a decent, decent run tonight. I mean, you could even consider this off the bat anyways. I mean, I think he's had like, you know, what? Well, the Nets allow like the fourth most or fifth most or something to the shot guard position. So this is, again, one of those kind of fantasy plays where... Courtney Lee's just in a good spot tonight. So this is the pivot to run real fast. Oh, and then, of course, you know, you got McCollum up. You know, you could take Frazier out and for McCollum. That's up to you guys. But if Harden doesn't play, pivot off of that and go with Westbrook and Frazier at point guard, Holiday and Lee at shot guard, Batum and Durant at small forward, Randolph and Zeller at power forward, and Asik for center. Okay, and like I said, guys, I mean, the New York News is going to throw off cashing lines so much and stuff. If you look at the lobbies on entering the contests, you're going to see, uh, let's see, the single entry has been dropped from about 20,000 entries to about 17,000. And that's just based on their player pool now. They had to do something like that. Looks like the $1 SWAT is closed, but the $2, they actually expanded it. It went to 130,000 entries. Yesterday it was at 117,000. I'm surprised they expanded the number of entries, losing the New York market. But it still has not filled. And we're at 3 hours and 15 minutes to lock. They might get it to fill. Um, they probably, you know, calculated that very carefully to figure out how they could do it with yesterday's numbers. But, wow, what a shot. Because I think today we would have seen a 250000 contest or even a $300,000 contest. Even though it's a small slate, it just, you know, they, they try to attract business. And, um... Like I said, though, I mean, if there's, there could be overlay in that. I mean, you're still missing about 42,000 entries. People from California might pick up some of the slack. People from Texas, although Texas is going to lose FanDuel, too. They made an agreement, on, and they lose it in the beginning of May or something. So states are dropping like flies, guys. Um, play while you can. Enjoy it, obviously. Let's go back into the cash lineup for today. Um, if you are going to play 50-50s, um, you know, obviously still go for the $1 single entry, double ups like that. That's your best chance to cash right there, right there. And then, you know, you can go to multipliers and, you know, you can do the big double up will have like a steady line, but and you can do enter more than once. But the single entries will probably have a slightly lower cashing line, these 568s right here. Okay. Um, that's the fantasy forecast for today. I've made it a little longer hoping that the cord will get here in time. It still hasn't arrived, but hopefully it'll be here in seconds. I'll go check the mail now. Um, in closing, your cash entry, and this is the pivot off if Harden doesn't play. Westbrook, Frazier. Frazier can be changed to McCollum. That is your choice, guys. Westbrook and Frazier or McCollum at the point guard. Holiday and Lee at the shot guard. Batum and Durant at small forward. Zebo and Zeller at power forward and ASIC for the center. Oh, I did win yesterday, guys, even though the show didn't come up. I'll go ahead and show you the settled contest. I had a 290 and a 287 for last yesterday, which wasn't bad. I only played tournaments. Uh, I thought that the GPP cashing lines could be lower with the New York news, and they were low enough when I cashed one of them and just barely missed the other. You can see the difference in position, 21,000, 24,000, 23,000 was the line. So, you know, you needed about 289 last night barely squeaked by. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening planned. It's the middle of the week, not even hump day yet, but you know, we're, we're getting there, guys. I really apologize to all you New York fans. If you are in New York, I do believe you can take the train over to Jersey and make your entries and come back. Um, I sent out a legal option, so 
I mean, it's all about geography. You can be in a different state, and New York's got a lot of bordering states that are still legal, guys. Okay, that's about it. Hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day, wonderful evening. Love you all to death. Go out there and go win some money.